And the creators of An Englishman in New York are here, Kevin Godley and Lowell Cream. describe yourselves what are you uh, nervous <laughs> <laughs> we are lots of different things uh, I think the public knows basically as musicians having been in 10 CC and so forth but uh, our careers are starting to change as you know we're moving more towards visual uh, things but uh, we're sort of got our yes communicators we've got our fingers in lots of different pies I think How we like you entertain your mainly your work I mean Lol, do you do one bit and Kevin always do other aspects or are you a, a <laughs> No, no, it, it's very democratic. It's truly democratic. Uh, we, we, one of us will get the, the initial spark for a harebrained scheme. That's usually how it starts. And then the other will enthuse about it or, or put it down immediately. And if we enthuse about an idea, then we'll, we'll both see it through. Like in the case of a song, uh, Kev might have an idea for a lyric or I might and he might have an idea for a tune. But well, usually things will come together so it's totally 50-50 and it, we've been working together for so long that the rapport we've got, I think, 22 years. That's terrible. 22 <laughs> years? <laughs> it's dreadful. That's a long yeah. time. We're older than we look, or perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so the rapport makes it very easy to just work in tandem on everything. We're very lucky in the sense that the sort of ideas we come up with, it's like we've got little taps with different labels on that we can direct the ideas towards. We can turn a tap that says film or a tap that says book or a tap that says music. And uh, so far, things have gone particularly well. I mean, well, who knows what the future will be? Yes, the How puddle. did you get to where you are today? I mean, uh, bribery and corruption. <laughs> 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 now, you were, you were first came to notice, um, I suppose, one, one almost everybody would remember you from being in uh, 10CC. But actually, pre that, you were in a group which people might not remember so well called Hot Legs. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yep. What, what How do you know these hot things? <laughs> Whatever happened to Hot Legs? We, we had a very big single, one single called Neanderthal Man, which had a superb lyric. How many Neanderthal man? You're a Neanderthal girl. That was about Let's it. Let's make Neanderthal love in, in, in yes, Neanderthal. Yes, I remember world. it well. Yeah, I thought it was the family show. <laughs> <laughs> the lyric was so strong, yeah. you know. <laughs> we had that hit record. It was a hit here, it was a hit in America. We then went on a, a tour supporting the Moody Blues and got rave reviews and sat back and waited till the, for the phone to ring and, and nothing happened on. and uh, was the, the group end. folded so it wasn't hot legs in fact more or less 10 cc it was yes it was 10 cc without graham graham was in the states at the time he was into the the period where he was writing with do you know castanet's cats they they were doing yeah. all that bubblegum stuff like the ohio players and uh, express, a whole range of express, butter sorry, records ohio basically. ohio Express. Express. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Ohio players. And uh, yeah, he was working in the States, so Eric and, and Kevin myself did the hot legs thing. In fact, Graham came back in time to do the live thing with the Moody Blues, and uh, we were all working together because we lived in Manchester, and it was a very natural formation. Were you thought crazy to leave 10CC when they were at the height oh, of their success? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, it's a difficult business anyway to sort of get anywhere in. So if, if one makes a, a success, under normal conditions, people expect you to continue the success and perpetuate the success. But we're sort of strange people. We, we're not in the business to make money. Everything we've ever done, we've done because we enjoy doing it and, and we have fun doing it. And 10CC had come to the stage where we weren't enjoying ourselves particularly anymore. So come hell or high water, we felt that was the step we had to take. And there was no question that, it, that the two of you would stay together. I mean, it was There's no question that the two of us would stay problem. together. <laughs> <laughs> no but your first venture was, uh, in sheer financial terms, slightly less than successful, wasn't it? And that you, that's true. You spent, was it, a yeah. quarter million quid? Is that true? No, that's not true. Was it? Was it? Was it? No. Yep. So I was reliably <laughs> told that it was, it it was, was in the region of that. Yes, was it was a lot of money. Treble album. You lent us a few. It was. It was, it was a triple album. Um, but it, it didn't matter. I mean, you have to put your money no, where your mouth true. is. Basically. But was it your money? It was our mouth. Yes. <laughs> that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> it was half, half of it was our money and half of it was the record company's money. Yeah. And, and it went down uh, the plug hole. It went right down the proverbial plug hole. Yeah. But, uh, and by this time, had you realised the vital importance of videos 
you know, no. to go with the music. But we were, we, when we were doing that project, we were seeing it as a film. You see, we're, we're actually, we're, we're totally into films and videos, a way for us to learn a bit of the skill, and, and we, we actually shoot on film and edit on video sometimes. So we're trying to learn how to make films. And when we did that project, it was written partially as a, as, as a film, and there's a book with it, with, with illustrations, like a storyboard, as well as the, as the music. In the end, it became what we thought of, a, of as an ear movie for the blind, because in sound, we did everything we were never allowed to do with, with, mm. with cameras and film. And you see, death, it, it's very expensive to kind of make films, and it's relatively not as expensive to make music, as a, even though it's quite expensive, if you see what I mean, to make music. It costs like three or 400 pounds a day to make a record, so if you make mistakes, you know, record companies can like can stand that loss. Well, in a movie, it's like ten thousand pounds a minute. It is could a movie be. or a video to promote a record? Is it ever viable? I mean, oh, that, yeah, that, that Englishman in New York, that was obviously a very expensive video. No, well, it was no, a very it cheap video. It cost eight thousand pounds. Yeah, it's very cheap, very cheap. But it cost us eight thousand pounds, or cost the record company eight thousand pounds to make that video. Um, but it was extremely viable. The record was a hit all over Europe. And um, without us appearing, that's correct. It's a very, very good selling device. Mm. There were there were mixed opinions in the record company at one point because the viability, uh, the way the way you kind of question the viability of a, of, um, of a video economically was in dispute. Was it actually making the difference or not? And it was strange that they were having an argument about it at Polydor, and one of the guys who was in charge of giving the money out said we shouldn't really be spending money on videos that much and the day he said it the video that we did for for steve strange for visage went from number 52 in the charts to number two after one showing on german television which kind of uh, blew the argument well let's have a look at another video that you've done and, and this is again for yourselves <laughs> yes, a track called right. wide boys is there anything in particular we should look for in this brief snatch of yeah, it yeah the the idea behind this particular film was to use the device of cutting from one scene to another, but to use it in a much more interesting way than the normal cut. It can only be done with video. Yes, yeah, so right. we devised a special way of doing that, which you'll see. Okay, well, here's Godly and Cream. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> was that for a single or just an album track? A single. Now, I hate to say this, but that single was not a hit. Correct. And your first big hit as Godly and Cream was the one song you didn't do a video for. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> That's very strange. It's ironic, isn't it? So what I'm trying to say is, is Why? it worth doing videos, great though they are? It's worth doing videos because the sort of artists that are making music today in the pop scene, particularly in England, are very visually orientated. And, vi and, and a video is not, to a lot of people in this business, just a medium for selling records. It's, it's a medium of expressing yourself. And in that case, it's important. See, Apart the other side from of the promotion. question is, if they had got the video that we did for White Boys shown on television, it wasn't shown because of the television strike at the time. If it had been shown, that record might well have been a hit. So you're saying that there are quite a few records that are successful really on the strength of the visuals. There's another, there's another yes. reason, and that is because when you make a video, you have control. When we make a video for someone, we have control over what they look like. And a record, it, it is true to say, if you do Top of the Pops live and you do it okay, it can help the record. And if you do it badly, it has been known to destroy the record's chances. When you make a video, you have that kind of control right? so that you can enhance the artist. And but you've also set them. up a production company to make videos for other artists other than yourselves, right? We, we haven't actually got our own production company. That's not quite correct. We, we are directors, and we work in conjunction with a, a production company. So well, an artist would come to you and say, I want you to sell my record visually. Yes, yeah. that's right. Nine times out of ten, they don't have a clear idea of what they want to see, but they have some ideas about the way they want themselves to be seen, if you understand what I mean. And we're going to see fairly shortly um, an example of a video you directed, conceived, yeah. or both, for Duran Duran. Now, this video, which I've, <laughs> I've seen beforehand, <laughs> I thought was um, fairly, how can I put it? I mean, it's, it's you're kind slavering, of, you're slavering. It, <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> yes, enjoyable, but it isn't the kind of video that, that would get on top of the pops. And again, one asks the question, well, if it's going to be something that's rather uh, X-rated, uh, yes. how can it ever help sell records? Well, but perhaps we should let the audience hear. Well, it, it wasn't actually designed for showing on television, that particular video, as a matter of fact. 
So what was it designed for? It was designed for showing in, in clubs in America that have screens in them. It's like video clubs, or like video discotheques, which is a, a very nice idea. Well, let's have a look at Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Duran Duran, is that right? <laughs> no, you were right. <laughs> Duran Duran. Go. Now, that is a superbly made film, but what has it actually done for Duran Duran, apart from getting them a play on this programme tonight? It's made people talk about them. In America, it did the job tremendously well. There was a tremendous buzz about, funnily enough, about the video, Duran Duran video. Duran Duran, Duran. Duran. One, one a cynic might say, were hardly in the film. That's not the point. People say, have you seen the Duran Duran film? They mention the name, therefore yeah. it's done its job. But they were in the film sufficiently to know it was a mm. film that placed them. So the idea we had with that was to actually to show the band in every frame, which you can do. Mm. That, can, that could not necessarily do the job, as well as suggesting that the group, like the Rolling Stones, would. Uh, or, or even the Beatles, you know, you'd see them in association with something that was interesting, and it helped their image by showing them in, in a given place at a given time. It helps their, the aura, literally. Um, that great. was kind of the attitude. So you don't think That's there's right. a danger <laughs> of, of sheer technique obscuring basic talent, yeah. basic there melody? Is, well, it the, might do, but we're still learning. Yeah. There is yeah. a danger, but I mean, we hope that we have a certain amount of taste that we apply to it. And, right. Uh, we, we are conscious of that. Now, as men of many parts, you've also done a book, which I understand has... Talking about taste, <laughs> yes, we <laughs> dropped it all completely. You're talking completely. about taste, yeah. which has been banned by <laughs> virtually every major bookseller in the country. We had a good time drawing why, it, though. Why is this? Why, why the book? No, well, why was why it banned? Yep. I don't know why it was banned. I don't understand why it was banned. I mean, these certain chain stores, which remain nameless, you know, like Smith's and Menzies, <laughs> they, they see fit to display in their stores White House and Playboy and various things like that. Um, and we've done a book, which is a book of caricatures and drawings of the rock business, which uh, they are a little rude, but they are pure fun, whichever way you look at it. Have we got one? And um, flash up. To see. They, they chose to ban them. This is a drawing. This is what? That's this a clean one. <laughs> that's a clean one. This is, that's the first drawing in the book, where uh, the book is the last 20 years of the rock business as seen from the inside in caricature. And that's in the pram. Uh, talents were first spotted. You know, there was definitely potential there for swinging a microphone. It's very good likeness, actually. Who does the drawings? I mean, do you, do you both do half the picture? Or? Oh, no, 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 no. We, we, we have very similar styles in drawing. We have an art, an art college background. We've been drawing for a long, long time. Uh, we did a list of the drawings and the subject matter we were going to cover before we began the book. Right. And then we each ticked off the drawings that we particularly liked to do. And we both did one at the same time. Well, here's another picture, I think, coming up. Yes, I'll, that's what the, is this? That's well, the last cello lesson, which is... Um, <laughs> just prior to the first bass guitar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our hero had just discovered the bass guitar, so it stuck your cello, mate, and he was up. Mm. Who drew that one? Which of you drew that well, one? Well, one of us drew that one. But you We're not telling. Oh, I see. <laughs> and there's one more, I believe, which we can show you. Now, this, um, is, this is what? That's the brass section, actually. Um, there's a section in the book. When, when the guy, uh, our hero, actually takes up the music first semi-professionally, then professionally, finally gets his first recording session, and there's a whole section in drawings of the book of, of session men, typical British se session men, like the string section, the yeah. sax players. This is the brass section. Uh, yeah, there's always three people looking at the watch and a guy who wants to be an avant-garde jazz player who won't stop. Yeah. Some of it's very <laughs> almost in-jokey, I suppose, because we've seen that kind of side of, of the recording business, from managers you know, to other musicians, to the whole spectrum, if you like. But uh, it, it seemed like a good subject to, which would sum up the whole of the past 20 years of... Uh, so will you be doing another one in, in general? Like 20 years We're thinking time? of doing the Bible, actually. <laughs> an illustrated version of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> See if that gets banned. Yeah. Very commercial book, I recommend yeah. it. I wrote it. <laughs> anyway, your future plans consist of what? I mean, are you going to do more singles? We are. And albums? We are yes, we are. I mean, is silly at the moment. I mean, we've never been in a better position. We, we're sort of sitting here and projects are flying in through the window and the doors and we don't know what we're doing the next day. It's, it's well, we're, doing a, we're doing a film for the next rest of the month, are we? actually. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought we'd do another book. <laughs> we're doing a film yeah. with, uh, with Ringo and Paul McCartney. Right. It's like a... It's a mini, a a mini, mini film. promotional it's a ten, film. Ten minute, a long video, if you like. Is that to promote a record? It, or? It's to no. promote 
three Not records in a sense. Yeah. It's three records that, that Paul's produced and written on Ringo Starr's album, and we're stringing to them together in a sort of short film that A, does work as a promotional device, but B, is a sort of film in itself, just for its own sake. Great. Well, I sit in awe of your <laughs> mega achievements throughout the Thank uh, you very much. Very nice. different, Thank you. different aspects of uh, popular music. It's great, I think, that, that, that your recent singles have done so well, because it brings these other aspects you know, to the public attention. We and weren't uh, ready for it at all. No. Actually. You weren't? It came as a total Are you shock. being mobbed in the street by young women? Uh, no. Old women. Old women. <laughs> <laughs> Old women. <laughs> well, Kevin and Lowell, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, actually, at your request.